today is a message to reach out to Afro descendants in North America and throughout the slavery diaspora, but more specifically, this is a message to reach the followers or ex-followers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I want to read a statement. Taken from January 29th 1991 State of the Union Address by then President George H. W. Bush. Much good can come from the prudent use of power. And much good can come of this, a world once divided into two armed camps, now recognize one soul and preeminent power, the United States of America. This statement was made after the fall of the Soviet Union. George Bush declared America to be the sole preeminent power in the earth. I challenge anyone to go into these books and point out to me where it says United States of America is to be that sole preeminent power in the earth. There is a saying, a rose by any name or any other name is still a rose. In this case, we believe that the Quran is correct in its statement but it has just been misunderstood. And it's important for us to understand the truth today so that we might be able to disperse this information to the rest of our people throughout the slavery diaspora so that they might become free. In the 57th chapter of the Holy Quran, verse 22, it says, No disaster befalls in the earth or in yourselves, but it is in a book before we bring it into existence. If this statement is a truthful statement, then somewhere in this book, or the Bible, or a combination of the two, we should find the United States. It's got to be here. It can't not be here. But the question is, how do we identify it? How do we identify what is the United States? Put yourself for a moment in the place of the prophets who wrote and made this statement. What would they have been thinking when they wrote about disasters befalling people in the earth? Would they have considered 400 years of slavery to be such a disaster of such magnitude that it ought to be written in a book of prophecy? Well, we do know that in the Bible, the story or the prophecy is written that there is to be a people to undergo 400 years of bondage. That's right. But they don't say that it's you. Mm -hmm. 
they say it's someone else. And the place that they say that this took place was called Egypt. Well, let's examine the truth of this state. That piece of property, that territory, that land mass that has, has the name Egypt attached to it, that's not correct. If any persons of African descent would tell you that the last thing it is, is Egypt. That's right. It's definitely not Egypt. It's been called a lot of things, Kush and, and Kimi. It's been called a lot of things. That's right. But the people who live there, the people who reside in that land mass, they call it Misra or Musra or Misri. This is the name of that piece of property. If you would go and get a, a, a map of Africa, you would find that name, that ancient name, placed on that piece of property, not Egypt. Then what is Egypt? What about the pharaohs? What is it? Is there anything to this? Yes, there were pharaohs. No question about it. The images of those pharaohs, some of them, can still be seen to this present day. So we can't dispute that in that landmass, in that territory, there were ancient rulers called pharaohs or kings. Their tombs are called the tombs of the kings, not necessarily pharaohs. But Pharaoh represented a power of a king higher in power than the normal king. He was like a god. Yes, but the thing that we want to get to is what's taking place with the people that are associated with or connected with places wherein the description of them is that they are world powers. Because something happens in each one of these arenas. There are three places in scripture where a child is to be born. And that this child that is to be born represents a real an imminent threat to the powers that exist at that time. The first one account can be found in Exodus, the very first chapter, wherein the Pharaoh tells the midwives to kill all boy babies. Well, they decided they weren't going to kill the boy babies. So Pharaoh opted to tell all of his people, wherever you find boy babies, toss them in the river so that they might be killed and drowned. Save the girls alive. Then there is Matthew, first chapter of Matthew. A baby is being born of such a real and imminent threat to Herod that he sends out an order for all children to be killed, two years old and under, especially the boys. And then over there in Revelations, a baby is about to be born, and a dragon stands in wait, lying in wait for the child to devour the child as soon as it's born. Mm. Sound like the television. A baby coming into the world poses a real, present, and imminent danger to the power and authority of those in power at that time. But you got to use your wherewithal, your mind, your reasoning to discern what this book is really talking about. 
If the neighbor next door had a child that was just being born, and they said that child is going to be the baddest thing on the planet, he's going to do this and he's going to do that, what would you say? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he, he can't even change his diapers. <laughs> he can't feed himself. He's not going to do nothing to me. But these babies all pose a present danger to kings. We're not talking about just everyday people. These people feel threatened by this baby. What makes this baby have such impact in the world? One of the things that makes this baby different is that this baby escapes all the plots, plans, and schemes that they have to destroy, kill, or neuter the baby. This baby escapes. How does the baby escape? What does the baby have? What does this, is being utilized? to save the baby. There is this thing in warfare called deception or subterfuge. See, one of the things that we have yet to really truly realize and understand is that we are actually in the midst of the war called Armageddon. Yes, sir. It's not coming. It's already here. Yes, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked the question over six, almost 60 years ago now. Which one will survive the war of Armageddon? What kind of war or battle is Armageddon? If you would ask some of the scientists, military men, they would tell you that it's a physical battle that is to be fought somewhere in a place called Medigo, somewhere near Israel, where all the armies of the world are to be gathered for a third world war. But what does your messenger say? Come on. Messenger Elijah Muhammad. He said that the last great and decisive battle that is to be waged in this world on a physical level is to be fought in the sky. In the sky. Right. Mm -hmm. Not to be fought on the earth. Mm -hmm. Not to be fought on earth. Before America has this great battle to fight out in space, she has to contend with all these other elements that exist in the earth that she has offended. She has offended a lot of people. That's right. A lot of people want at America. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that there are seven angels that want to get at America. He said, ain't even enough for one. And they want America. I heard Mr. Muhammad say himself, he said, I got armies with me. I got generals with me. Do you think Silas Muhammad is alone? No, Not by a long shot. He has the scientists with him. He calls upon them when he needs their help. And they hear him and they do as he asked them to do and they will continue to do that as long as he continues to stay in the realm that he's in. Let's talk again about this baby. This baby seems to represent a single individual. And that is the thought that most people have. But what does your messenger say? 
Page 127. Message to the black man. He says that the woman in Revelations 12.4, this is the woman that's given birth to a baby, and the dragon is waiting to devour that child. The messenger says that the woman actually refers to the last apostle of God and that her child refers to his followers or the entire Negro race, as they are called, who are not yet ready to be delivered, mm. go to their own. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that that baby is you and me. Yes, it is Silas Muhammad, for he is the first one of us to be begotten from the dead where we had died again. Mm -hmm. But each one of us who comes after him in our own order become a part of this child. And that child represents a people who want freedom, justice, and equality. Yes, sir. You got thrown off track for a moment. Mm -hmm. And if you're not very careful, you'll get thrown off track again. Teach. You go to the devil, the devil, Teach. asking him to give you justice. Mm -hmm. Teach. There is no justice in the devil. Right. He is showing his true colors today. That's right. Yes. 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 All of our brothers and sisters who got caught up mm -hmm. in the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. thinking that they could achieve freedom, justice, and equality through the use of integration. Mm -hmm. That if we get in the same place, that we will end up at the same time doing the same thing, getting the same benefits, mm -hmm. same rewards. Not so. Not so. Not so. You've got to remember that this people is following the dictates of their God. Teach. Yaqub instructed them on what to do and how to do us. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. The reason that he made them was to subdue the black nation bring the black nation into submission to the will of his made man. Teach. And he did do so, nine-tenths of the whole planet submitted to Yaqub's man. That's right. But now the time to break the power that has been held on the black nation has come. And the Honorable Silas Muhammad is leading the charge. Yes, sir. He declared spiritual warfare mm -hmm. August 21st, 1977. Right. Anyone who is standing today, regardless of the pol political, philosophical, religious, whatever position that you've taken today, and you are associating yourself in any way to the lost foundation of Islam or the term nation of Islam, you owe your rise to Silas Muhammad. Yes, sir. There was no nation of Islam for you to connect to That's right. until 1977. That's right. You may have carried Islam, nation of Islam in your heart, mm -hmm. but it didn't come out your mouth. That's right. Teach. And it certainly wasn't in your actions yes, because I was out there too. Yes. And I know what I was doing. And I, so I know what you were doing. Make it plain. <laughs> it's time for us to submit first to the truth of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Then we can spread the truth that will shake up this world. But we must first realize who we are. Yes, sir. You are the original people of this earth. Mm -hmm. The very first human beings in the universe. Yes, sir. 
you have with you and in you a power that we have not yet tapped into because we have been using and manipulating using the power of this world which is lies, tricks, and deceit. And oh yes, it'll get you to a certain spot. You can accomplish a few things, but it'll be short-lived. It won't last forever. The thing that we have, the devil can't compete with. Our ability to speak truth and practice right conduct if we choose. He can't even do it even when he chooses to. The only thing that kind of halfway keeps the devil in place is his law. That's right. It's the same thing that kind of keep us in check most of the time. Because we're not afraid of no God, are we? Obviously not. That's right. Not doing all the things that we do in, right. in and under the cover of darkness. That's right. Where the police ain't there. We're not trying to hide from God. That's right. Because God's supposed to be able to see everything. That's right. And he does. But here we are under the power, under the thumbs of other two-legged human beings who made a law that they made and have subjected us to their laws. That's right. Their laws weren't originally set out for us. That's right. That's right. Teach. That's right. Their laws were designed for them. Teach. That's right. The one of the first laws that they made that was strictly and specifically made for us was called vagrancy law. You're not working, you don't got no job, you're getting locked up. That law was even around in the 50s and the 60s. When I was a young man, you couldn't hang around on the corner do whopping and singing under the light like the white boys did on, on Jersey Shore and Jersey Boys and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. If we were caught hanging out on the corner, the police came and ran us off the corner. Sure From doing what? Singing. Running in dozens or something. But we're not committing no crime. No crime. There ain't no crime to say you can't hang out under the light. Mm -hmm. No crime. But they took it upon on themselves to make a rule or make a law specifically designed for us. Our brothers and sisters are being shot and killed in the streets of America like it's legal. That's right. Under what authority do they operate? Good question. They operate under the color of law. That's right. That's right. They operate under the color of law. Mm. A law that they made. That's right. One day, you may decide you want to write a law. Mm -hmm. You can. You, do you know that? You have a nation. You have the Afro-descendant nation. Yeah, you got a Congress. You got a Congress. House of Representatives, Senate. You can write some laws. Just like they wrote some laws. You are recognized in the UN as a nation and you have the right to assemble, to communicate one with another about your problems and try and come to a solution about your problems. Not everyone wants to be Muslim, and we understand that. But all of us want freedom, justice, and equality. That's right. And you're not going to get freedom, justice, and equality in America. Teach. You are not brought here to be equal. That's right. Come on, come on. In 1857, the Supreme Court says we are of such an inferior nature Teach. that the white man has nothing by right that he ought to.
to give us no respect for us. Tell it, Minister. That mindset still exists today. That's right. Walk through the aisles of the grocery store and see how much room the white man tries to take up just by the very fact that he's walking down the aisle. Yes, he sir. thinks that he ought to be able to make you move over. Yes, sir. That's what yes, sir. Because that's what he used to do in the 50s, 40s, and the 60s. That's, that's right. right. That's right. You don't think much about it today. But that same mindset exists to this very day. Yes, sir. That's right. The baby proposes a threat. But what is the threat that the baby proposes? Is it a physical threat? Is there anything physical that you and I can come together to do against America and win? No, sir. Mm. I mean, and win. No, no sir. sir. Nothing. No, sir. If you think that you can go to war with America and win, you are gravely mistaken. Yes, sir. You can go to war with America, but not at physical level, using carnal weapons. That's right. You got the ability to cause earthquakes. Yes, we yes. do. That's right. You got that ability. Yes, we do. You got the ability to cause hail, storms, sleet, and rain. Yes, sir. That's right. You got that as an ability. Yes, we do. Silas Muhammad has proven it to us that we have it as an ability yes. because he has it. Yes, sir. Right. If he has it and he's representative of us as a people, then we got it too. We just got to learn how to tap into yes, it. Sir. Right. You are Allah. Yes, sir. There is no other Allah in existence. While we talk about the power of the white man here in America, I also talk about the power of the white man in Israel and in Arabia. Because they are threatened also by this baby. Yes, sir. That's right. So much were they threatened by this baby that they came over here from Arabia to poison the mind of Imam Warathin Muhammad against his father. Yes, sir. Mm. And to teach that Muhammad of Arabia was Allah's last messenger mm -hmm. and the seal of the prophets, and that no prophet or messenger is to come after him. Mm. That's not in this book. That's not in this book. This book says that Allah will raise up in every nation, every nation, a messenger. Not just a messenger, but a messenger who speaks the language of that people. Teach. We don't speak Arabic beyond assalamu alaikum and wa alaikum salam. That's all. That's right. <laughs> so this Arabic, I can't read it. I couldn't understand an Arab if he came over here trying to tell me something unless he could speak English. That's right. <laughs> if Master Farad Muhammad, Almighty God Allah, born in Mecca, Arabia, Teach. if he's born in Mecca, Arabia, you know he knows about Orthodox Islam. That's right. He knows about making rakahs and making pilgrimage and hajj mm -hmm. and all about Ramadan in the month of Ramadan. Don't you think he knows about all of that? Yes. Then why didn't he come over here and tell us to practice Orthodox Islam? Teach. Good question. He didn't instruct us to practice Orthodox Islam. Mm -hmm. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, Theology of Time. The sun is going down in the west. This teaching, 
What teaching? This teaching that I'm teaching will raise up a powerful sun and spirit of truth from this part of our planet by us from whom God has raised. No more will you look toward the east after this for the light of truth to come. After when? After Master Farad Muhammad has come because he was the only one that was predicted to come out of the east to the west to bring any kind of light. He's the only one. All of the prophets saw him coming. Coming out of where? Out of the east. But the honorable Elijah Muhammad said, no more. After this, do you look to the east for any light of truth to come? Yes, sir. So brothers, sisters, why do you prostrate yourself to an unseen, unspirit uh, God when the honorable Elijah Muhammad, an almighty God, instructed you to stand upright? Yes, sir. Those are our instructions from God. Yes, sir. Just like the white man got his instructions, marching orders from Yaku. Maybe, nah, I better not say that. I'll just say this. They did not disobey Yaku. They didn't. That's right. <laughs> you go read why. Yeah. But they didn't disobey Yaku. They followed his instructions. Yeah. Even after his death. Teach. They still followed his instructions. Teach. Why? Because they knew what the success of them would be if they followed the instructions of their God. Why were they afraid of this little baby? Had they ever seen a baby be born and take power before? Have you ever seen that happen before? Yes, sir. Never seen that happen before. No, no, so what's the basis of your fear? Teach. What's the basis of you fearing this baby? Maybe it's because the scientist wrote about this baby. And you know the scientist track record. Every 25,000 years they write their history in advance. They even wrote about the man who was going to make this man, other man, this white man. They said in the year one, they predicted in the year 8,400 he going to be born. About 20 miles from Mecca. At six years old, He's going to have this idea to make a man unlike the original man by playing with two pieces of steel. But they still are not afraid of him at six years old, even with that mindset. He's not a threat to them at that time. When does he become a threat? Once the jailhouses started getting filled up, once the, the people start hearing what he has to say, and start following him, then he becomes a threat. So much of a threat does Yaku become that the king himself comes down to talk to him. But he's not a threat as a baby. So are we talking about a physical baby? We obviously cannot be talking about a little bitty baby just being born. That's right. We got to be having reference to something else. Yes, sir. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has pointed us in the direction which says that this child is representative of a whole nation of people. Mm. A whole nation of people. Should they fear a nation? Oh, yes, they should. Yes, sir. You know you number about 40 million? Mm -hmm. Do you know? that you contribute over a trillion dollars into this economy. Yes, sir. Do you know what powers? What is the power base of this world? Where does the power in this world lie? There are basically three areas in which the power of this world is seated. That's in political power, economic power, and religious power. Everything else falls up under these three headings. 
all of the military might, all the other things that they have going on in the world that you might consider a base of power, they all fit under somewhere under these umbrellas. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, peace be upon him, he pushed against that power that was religious. How much religion do you see in America today? You got a lot of people claiming that they're religious, going to church. That's right. But they're not practicing what their religions teach. That's right. Not even the Muslims. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said 1,400 years ago, uh, three generations from me, you will not even be of me. He said, in the last days, only thing that you're going to have left are the rituals. That's all that's going to be left of you. Mm. Nothing else will be left. You'll be like a shell. Mm. Nothing will be left. One of the greatest signs and symbols of the, of the world's religious power waning is the acceptance of homosexuality throughout the world. Teach. In no society, Teach. no society on the earth is it acceptable. Teach. Except here. Teach. There are many places <coughs> that are talked about in scripture. And they all seem to fit one place. This place called America. In this Bible, in this Quran, there is a place of bondage. And that place of bondage is spiritually, spiritually called Egypt and Sodom. <laughs> That place Teach. is spiritually, symbolically called Egypt Teach. and Sodom. Mm. You thought San Francisco was Sodom. Yes, we did. <laughs> oh, but look at Atlanta. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, look at Atlanta. Mm. They have taken the lead. Mm -hmm. Per capita, they have taken the lead. Look at what's around us. We are surrounded by immorality. Yes, sir. You can't turn on your radio. Yes, sir. I deliberately listen to country and western today. <laughs> Just to get my mind. Yep. That's right. If I'm not listening to that, I'm listening to, de to jazz. That means no words. <laughs> Children don't stand a chance. Homosexuality is now prime time. Yes, sir. Used to be after 11, 12 o'clock. Yes, sir. Prime time. Time That's television. Right. That's right. And they ain't just saying they homosexual, just saying it. They're exhibiting it. That's yes, right. Yes, sir. Prime time. Yes, sir. They're doing everything they can to get us to go down with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They know that their time is up. The fact that Master Farad Muhammad got through their veil, pierced their veil, was able to get into America and plant the seed of truth in the mind of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, they knew then that their time was up. Because they had done everything possible to keep the light of truth from ever reaching the mind of the ex-slave. Yes, they had done everything. Yes, sir. All of the things that keep things were in place. All of their systems yes. were put in place. Mm -hmm. Their school system. Yes. Their health system. Yes. 
every system is in place, working in concert mm -hmm. to kill us, either physically, mentally, mm -hmm. spiritually, mm -hmm. economically, mm -hmm. but to destroy the black nation. That's right. Everything was in place. Mm -hmm. But Master Farad Muhammad was able to get into the country. They say he didn't even have a passport. Mm -hmm. How did he get in here? Mm -hmm. He say he came like a thief mm -hmm. in the night. Mm -hmm. And he came in under the cover of darkness. Mm -hmm. And his coming spread, or uh, began to spread the seed of truth in America. Mm -hmm. He by himself was able to resurrect depending on who you listen to, mm -hmm. somewhere between 10,000 and 25,000 mm -hmm. followers. Mm -hmm. And then he spent about three years with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right. Mm -hmm. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was spiritually impregnated by Master Farad Muhammad mm -hmm. so that this child could be born. The scientists of Islam, they had a meeting in Mecca. These 12 scientists decided that the original nation of Islam, which had gotten lost, needed to be returned. But they couldn't return until they had a thorough knowledge of themselves. A thorough knowledge of self includes a thorough knowledge of the devil. That's right. Because the devil came out of us. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a knowledge of him, then you don't have a knowledge of self. Because that mindset that is the devil still exists with us. It's still with us. That mindset in black skin has the same ulterior motives and objectives mm -hmm. as the white skin. Mm -hmm. The black cop, the one with the billy club, the mace, and the gun, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, carries please. the same equipment that the white boy That's carries. Right. Yes, sir. And if you will go to Baltimore and take a look at the officers yes, sir. who were charged mm -hmm. In this incident, Come on. in the killing of Mr. Gray, mm -hmm. you'll see that some of them had black skin. That's right. They were a part of it. Yes, sir. That's not just there. Mm -hmm. That's here, too. Yes, it is. I remember an officer telling another officer, one black officer to a white officer, telling the white officer, you don't know how to deal with them. Mm. Talking about blacks. Mm. But we do. Mm -hmm. Letting the white boy know if you run into a problem mm. that you can't handle, mm. we can handle it. Mm -hmm. Just getting black cops is not the solution. Mm -hmm. Just putting black faces on the city council. Mm -hmm. Not the solution. Not the solution. That's right. Mm -hmm. Getting a black president mm. is not, not the solution. Not the solution. Mm -hmm. mm. Come on, minister. Make it plain. Getting a pope mm -hmm. that's brown <laughs> from the, the brown people. Mm -hmm. not, not the solution. The solution. What did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say the solution was? Separation. Mm. Anything short of that, anything short of that is not the solution. Mm -hmm. Our solution has to be a divine one because our problem is a divine one. Mm -hmm. You didn't create your problem. The white man just coming to get you didn't cause the problem. Our problem started even before the white man was made. That's 
what I want you to hear and understand. Yes, sir. Before the white man, mm -hmm. we had a problem. Yes, we did. And until we deal with it mm -hmm. for what it is, the problem will persist. Yes, sir. And it doesn't matter where you go. Mm -hmm. You can't run away from yourself. That's right. Our religion, our way of life, is a simple way of life. It simply says, submit. Mm -hmm. But submit to what? Submit to truth. Submit to righteousness. That's submit right. to uh, those in authority as long as it doesn't conflict with your religion. That's right. If it conflicts with your religion, which is true, then you don't have to submit to it. You don't. Injustice is against my religion. Yes, sir. It's against my religion. Yes, sir. Inequality, that's against my religion. Yes, sir. It's just against my religion, so I don't submit to that. If you got somewhere that you can put me, where you think that's going to help you deal with me, then you need to be trying to put me there. Because I'm not going to submit to it. That's right. I'm not going to try and provoke you. That's right. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let you provoke me either. Brothers, your solution is to follow the messenger that is in your midst. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we loved him dearly. Are you planning to wait a thousand, two thousand years for him to return? Mm -hmm. When he has given us clear guidance, he says to us, after me will come God. That's what he said. Now, I'm just saying what he said. Yes, sir. Now, those of you who think he met Master Farad Muhammad, God, do you think that's, that's what he meant? Because if you do, then you miss his role. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad doesn't pave a way for the coming of Master Farad Muhammad. Master Farad Muhammad paved the way for him. That's right. But for his coming, there wasn't going to be any Elijah, uh, the scripture, or Moses in the person of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. So Master Farad Muhammad had to come first. When he left, his words, his parting words to the honorable Elijah Muhammad were, you do not need me anymore. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is questioned about whether or not the Master Farad Muhammad is coming back, his words, in my paraphrase, were, there is just as much scripture that says he is coming back that he ain't coming back. I lean to the side that says he's not coming back. He's not coming back. He had done all that the scriptures has for him to do, except for a few things that was left for the one coming after him to perform. In the performance of these tasks, you are supposed to be able to see that there is no God but man and that this man is a black man born from among you. Yes, sir. He's not coming out of the east. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad say he will be raised up out of this teaching from us. That's where he will come from. Teach. So you're supposed to be able to see that the man who gathers all of us 
throughout the slavery diaspora. Wherever we have been scattered, in all of those island nations where we've been scattered, we have been pulled together as one nation, the Afro-descendant nation, and we number 250 million. Mm. This is a greater witness of who he is than what anybody could say about him. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said of him, you're more like me than any of my sons. That's a great tribute to him, for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to say that of him. And he tells Queen Mishaki, I haven't seen any men trained like this since the Savior left. Great, great reviews of him. But the book says nothing is greater than the performance of the work that he does, that the Father gave him to finish. Teach. Master Farad Muhammad didn't finish everything. Teach. Otherwise, we would be gone. That's right. right. Uh, well, does that make sense yes, to you? Yes, sir. Yes. This would be over if he had done everything. But he had done what he was supposed to do. Another God has to come on the scene. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, after me will come God. But where will he come from? He said, he'll come out of you. That's where he's going to come from. He had to pave the way for him to come. Because you and I would have rejected him. We didn't believe in no black man doing nothing. That's right. Not following no black man nowhere. Yes, sir. Still say it. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, we do. So he had to pave a way just for you to see and come face to face with the reality of a God that's black. Teach. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him carried the baton as far as he could carry it. But he is not your and my messenger. He was a messenger of Allah. We give him that. But he wasn't our messenger. The Quran and the words of Allah are to be obedient to Allah and obedient to the messenger. The one that the messenger represents to us. Master Farad Muhammad is represented to us as Allah. Not some spook or spirit out in space somewhere. That's right. And don't tell me, brothers, that you get anything from uh, making rock hearts. <laughs> I'm telling you that you don't. That's right. I done tried it. Yeah. I tried it. Just to see, mm -hmm. can I get something out of making these rock cars that I'm not getting otherwise? Uh, get dizzy, get nuts. <laughs> I'm not trying to make fun. I'm just telling you, brother, who followed the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, get up off of your knees. Yes, sir. Get off of your knees. Tell him. And I don't care who told you to get on your knees. Tell him that I said get off your knees. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Because I'm following the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Teach, Teach. Now, if you want to follow the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, then you will follow what I'm saying to you. Teach. And you'll tell that other man to go to hell. That's right. Teach. It's time out for these leaders misleading the people. Yes, sir. Tell it. It's time out. Getting out and jumping out in front of people. They don't need you jumping out in front of them. They know what they're trying to do. They don't need that. If you're going to do anything, point them in the right direction. Don't jump out there in front of them trying to make your case, trying to make yourself look big, look good. Teach. They don't need that. They already got their mind made up on what they're going to do. What's going to happen is that you're going to lead the people in the wrong direction and cause them to suffer great harm dealing with your emotional self. You 
need to deal with your intellectual self, your rational self. That self that says, I'm going to do what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said do, and he said separate. He said that separation is so important that it's more important to teach that than to teach prayer. And prayer is one of the five pillars of Islam. The separation in his mind and in my mind is greater than prayer. Because prayer ain't going to do nothing for you if you don't get up off your rusty That's dust right. and do something. That's, That's right. right. All the prayers in the world is not going to help you. Say it. Can't you? Don't you know that by now? For after 460 years? Don't you know that prayer alone is not sufficient? Say it. Faith alone without works is insufficient? That's yes, right. Sir. We have to do what every other nation of people has done. That's right. We have to self-determine. Yes, sir. Not based upon somebody else's criteria. Teach. But on our own criteria. That's right. On our own set of values. Teach. On our own rules and regulations. We have the intelligence to build a government of our own. Yes, sir. We have the framework already in place. All we're asking for you to do is come aboard. Take part, be a part of. You don't have to leave your leadership to be a part of the Afro-descendant nation. We all are Afro-descendants. Yes, sir. Keep your religion, keep your political views, keep your leadership but come aboard and let's unite. Yes, sir. Unify under one banner and get the job done of saving our people. That's our role to play. That's our job to save our people. That's why we're here. That's right. That's why we were raised first. Yes, sir. You think you were raised just to be hanging around? Mm. Teach. That's not why you were raised. Teach. That's right. Teach, Master. The reason that you're raised is so that you can go out and raise others. Teach. Right. As you and I were raised. Give life to the dead. Teach. Don't you know that Jesus only raised a few people? Only a few. That's right. That there was the disciples who raised all the other people. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, Jesus only raised Lazarus. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Teach. That's all he raised was Lazarus. Hmm. All the other people who got raised, the disciples went out and raised them. Hmm. That's our job. I pray Allah will grant each of us the light of understanding as I reach for peace. Assalamu alaikum.